Hi, welcome to the eighth installment of Data Structures in 5 Minutes, and today I'll be talking about splay trees. And splay trees are nearly balanced binary search trees. So we're, we've talked about binary search trees and how they can be unbalanced. Then we talked about a potential solution in 2, 3, 4 trees. Splay trees are yet another solution that tries to balance the BST such that all the operations run on average in log n time. And boy, do they. So all operations involve a splay, which I'll explain later, and the average of log n time, and, but this log n usually is very fast. Worst case, of course, is theta n, but for any k splay operations with k reasonably large, you can expect the runtime in total to be of k log n, so k times log n, even in the worst case. And so what splay trees allow you to do is it allows you to access the keys that you've been recently working on much faster, and we'll see why. So here are some algorithms for splay trees. First one is find. You walk to the key <coughs> just like how you would for normally binary search trees, but at the very end, you're not done yet, you have to splay that node that you just found up. And this allows us to um, access this key faster in case we ever want to find it again. Uh, the next one's insert, and you insert the same way as you would into a normal binary search tree, but then you splay the node up. And finally, remove. You remove the same way as you do in a binary search tree. If the key is not found, you still have to splay. You splay the, a node that ended your search, so the node before you hit a null pointer. Um, otherwise, if you do find the key, of course, you remove the key, follow the same procedures, but you splay the parent up to the root. And so the remove is the exception you should remember. Good. And so what splaying does is it essentially allows the tree to kind of <coughs> sorry, balance itself. And uh, usually through the zigzag procedure that we'll show you. Good. So here's our example of a splay tree. And uh, one operation of the three that you have to remember is the zigzag operation. Zigzag operation happens when your x um, is um, two generations below. These are all for two generations below. And it's either the left child of a left child or the right child of a right child. So it's a straight line that you're dealing with. In which case, you want to um, rotate the grandparent and the parent over. And <coughs> the best way to remember this is to remember that the display tree also follows the binary search tree invariant. So when in doubt, just lean on that. Remember that <coughs> your goal is to move your x up. And how you do that is you move the x up here, and the parent and grandparent have to be greater, so they'll be to your right. And the opposite if your x is on the other side. Zigzag is when you have a nonlinear <coughs> um, path up two generations. It's either the left child of a right child or a right child of a left child. And in this case, you want your x to split uh, the grandparent and the parent. Remember, keeping in mind the binary search tree invariant. So your grandparent, of course, is going to be smaller than your x, and your parent is going to be larger. So we want to maintain that. Um, while trying to bump x to the top, and the children should fall accordingly, and <coughs> you should rely on the BST invariant to check where your children are. And so, say we have this example here, um, and we wanted to insert a 7. So we'd follow the same steps, right? <coughs> we'd add the 7 here, <coughs> sorry, here, <coughs> and then you, you want to splay the 7 up. So you see here that you have a <coughs> zigzag operation that you'll have to do. So what you do is <coughs> you split the 6 and the 8. So now you have the 7, 6, 8, and 9. That's one of the children left over. So good, you move the 7 up. <laughs> 7 up. <laughs> and then you have another zigzag operation. And so here, again, you split. So at the very end, you should get 7 on top, the 5 and the 10 are split. 5 <coughs> is the most logical parent of 7's uh, uh, child 6, right? Um, and it's already the child, uh, the parent of 3. Um, 
8 and 9 are greater than 7, so you know you're probably going to put them here. So there's 8 and 9. Uh, 10 is already the parent of 12. 11, 16, 13, 19, and 15. So this is what you get from <coughs> splaying the 7 up to the root after inserting it. So now we want to focus on the case where we remove the 8. And so we see here that um, sorry, the 8 is over here, and we want to replace it <coughs> with the smallest key um, that's larger than 8, which is 9. So we do that, <coughs> and so um, this 8 gets replaced with a 9. And now we want to display this parent 10 up. And so we can't use the zigzag and we can't use the zigzag uh, methods because they work for two generations. So all you have to do is just shift the 7 away and put the 10 on top. So here your 10 is on top, your 7 is there. 5, 3, 6. Number 6 is less than 7. The 9 becomes 7's child. 12 is here. 11, 16. 13, 19, and 15. So you can see that after these two operations, the tree still finds a way to balance itself nicely. And so these are a few examples of splay tree operations, and I hope these examples make it more clear. Of course, there are animations online that you can often check. But yes, the key to remember here is that splay trees are still binary search trees, and so they'll still have to follow this invariant but then you can <coughs> do most operations really fast.